lost, Shorty. We are talking Prison Ship, aka Star Slammer. This is a 1986 movie directed by Fred Olam Ray. And this one stars Sandy Brook as Tora, who is our kind of our main central protagonist. You've also got supporting roles from Susie Stokey, Ross Hagen, and Aldo Ray. Now, this tells the story of Tora, who is a prisoner in this kind of starship. Now, in the kind of the 80s and 70s, there was a kind of popular subgenre of women in prison movies. So why not make a women in prison movie in space? So that is exactly what they did. Now, I think it's easy to kind of look back on 80s movies with rose tinted glasses and say everything in the 80s was great. And it really isn't the case, as is demonstrated by this film. What is the story though? So Tora is this kind of uh, sassy female that gets abducted by the discount galactic empire and sent to this prison ship where she is ruled over by the kinky uh, female warden who runs around in S&M gear and her kind of right hand woman played by Dawn Wildsmith. And there she initially comes afoul of the kind of like the top prisoner called Mike who is actually a female prisoner, but nonetheless, uh, called Mike. And of course, they initially have a rivalry, but they of course work it out to try and defeat the uh, their prisoners, prison captors, and escape. What will happen? Well, you'll have to watch the movie to find out. So this isn't a good movie, and we're gonna just talk about it why in just a minute, but can I say anything in the plus column? What did work in this film for me? There is actually one thing which I think this movie did very well. And that is the strange kind of incidental humour that this film has. And it's not anything which is overtly in the plot, but when you're watching the film, you'll notice that there are some quite funny things that happen within the movie in the background. And quite often, it's over like a kind of a tannoy system, like a PA system, where you have these kind of announcements detailing different kind of things for the prisoners. And they're kind of quite funny kind of parodies of you know, popular kind of science fiction ideas or, or you know, pop culture references that are kind of like skewed to be this kind of like, kind of funny parody. And I have to say, it's the funniest thing in the film. And it's pretty consistent consistent through the movie itself. And uh, yeah, if you just listen to that, it's not really in the kind of the main plot, as they say, any kind of gags that are kind of more overt in the kind of the plot don't really work. But this sort of background uh, humor, which I think probably was added later, is actually kind of quite fun. Fans of kind of over the top characters may still enjoy some of the kind of the, uh, the, the, the very kind of colorful uh, cast of characters that we have in this movie. As I say, the warden is just kind of constantly strutting around shouting in stockings and suspenders and a kind of like, uh, you know, cleavage showing Basque and things like that. And, you know, we have some very kind of over the top characters and, 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 and silly kind of science fiction ideas. It does kind of look like it's going to, it's going to be some type of science fiction porno, but just without the kind of the actual porno. But that's kind of what it looks like. I will say there are one or two decent prosthetic effects on display here as well. Uh, now, a lot of the, the kind of the, the, the effects, which we'll talk about in a minute, are actually borrowed from other properties. But nonetheless, on screen, we do get a couple of, of, of reasonable kind of like uh, uh, bits of prosthetic work and stuff like that. But let me just come back to that because some of these things are just obviously taken from other properties. We have a fight with this kind of monster, which is actually the puppet from the movie The Deadly Spawn. We get kind of external science fiction, you know, spaceship shots and kind of like scenery shots from properties like Battle Beyond the Stars, uh, the Buck Rogers TV show, Dark Star. And then we get kind of costumes taken from other movies like Metal on the Destruction of Jared Sin, uh, Galaxy of Terror, stuff like that. So this really is a very, very low budget, thrown together hodgepodge of a movie. Uh, now you might not care that these things are, are kind of taken from other properties. If you have not seen them, you'll not know that. But nonetheless, it's, you know, if you watch 
watching beanies, I would have assumed you probably have watched at least some of these things. Um, but the story itself, unfortunately, is pretty dull. Uh, the character work here is, is just not particularly good. We can all still get behind some of the kind of the cheesy heroes and villains that we see in B movies and science fiction films, like the ones I've just mentioned. But in this film, I, I felt that they failed to make any kind of really kind of like likable or particularly kind of entertaining characters here. Everyone here feels like they're kind of they're doing their best pantomime uh, kind of science fiction t you know show here. Everyone just seems just way too kind of either over the top, a huge cliche, or just completely sort of just over the top silly. So you don't really ever kind of particularly care about any of the characters or kind of buy into them. The storyline itself is very derivative and not particularly interesting. It doesn't really have any particularly good ideas. There's a lot of people just walking around talking and it, it, with sort of silly kind of dialogue and stuff like that. And uh, it ultimately just feels like they're kind of making it up on the fly. It, it's not an interesting film. It doesn't really have any real fun moments. It doesn't really have any particularly kind of fun or interesting characters. Um, and yes, you can kind of watch it just for a bit of trashy fun. But it, it, that's the thing. This movie doesn't really have that much of a fun factor. It's, it, there are films I have mentioned that these, these film, this film takes props from. Metal Storm, you know, Battle Beyond the Stars that are fun, that have nice, that have good, interesting characters that, that are cheap, but we can still root behind. This film does not have that. It, it is quite a dull and um, uninteresting affair. Very cheap, very kind of slapped together. Uh, sadly, not one uh, which is kind of really worth revisiting, I wouldn't say. I'll give this one a three out of 10. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.